Hey there. The goal of this video is to explore the different physical characteristics that minerals display, as well as how we can use those characteristics for identification purposes. So let's dive right in. The characteristics we're going to look at include color, streak, luster, breakage, hardness, as well as a handful of other characteristics. So let's begin by looking at color. So when we're talking about color, what we're talking about is the visible color that a mineral appears to the naked eye. So what do you see when you actually look at the sample? Now it's important to note that color is generally not a reliable characteristic to use for identification. So let's see why it's really not the best thing to use. Um, if you look at these two mineral samples, uh, they look very similar. In fact, their colors are almost identical purples. Uh, but the fact is, the one on the left is quartz and on the right is fluorite. Uh, and so if we see multiple minerals appearing in the same color, then color might not be the best characteristic to use for identification. Just to drive this home, take a look at these two samples. Also look very similar in this kind of milky, white, translucent color. The one on the left is calcite and the one on the right is halite. So again, color, not so great. Uh, just one more quick example. Here are two minerals that both have a very metallic silver looking color. The one on the left is magnetite and on the right is galena. So you can see color does pose some challenges. Uh, and in fact, it, it poses some additional challenges. Take a look at all of these mineral samples. Uh, well, the fact is they're all quartz. So quartz exists in multiple colors. And so because of these issues, color is not a reliable characteristic to use for identification. Uh, that being said, we do use it as a starting point sometimes, uh, but we don't really rely on it uh, by itself. And so we have to turn to some other physical characteristics to help us. Uh, another example of a characteristic that we can use is called streak. So what a mineral streak is, is the color of the mineral in its powdered form. Uh, and the way we test it is we take the sample and we rub it against an unglazed ceramic street plate. These look like little tiles. They come in black and white. And you take your mineral and you actually rub it a little bit on the streak plate. And what that does is it breaks off a little bit of the mineral in its powdered form so that you can identify the color as a powder. Uh, now you might think, well, the color is going to be the same whether it's in a powder or not. But that's not necessarily the case. Uh, if we look at some examples, so this is galena. Uh, and galena does look kind of a metallic silver color when it's whole. And then when you do its streak, it, it looks similar, but it's almost more of a blackish color. Uh, sulfur gives you a yellowish white streak. Um, azurite gives you a bluish streak. Um, and then something more complex like calcanthite gives you almost a white streak, even though the mineral itself appears blue. So that's streak, the color of the mineral as a powder. But we want to look at additional properties or characteristics as well. So let's look at luster. So what mineral luster is, is the way in which light reflects off of the surface of the mineral. Uh, there are two main types, metallic and non-metallic. And then there are some additional types of luster that you may come across, things like vitreous, pearly, silky, waxy, etc. But again, the two main types are metallic, which would be minerals that you can describe as actually looking like chunks of metal. So these are going to tend to be gold, brassy, silver kind of colors, very reflective with uh, kind of the light sparkling off of the surface. This is as opposed to a non-metallic mineral like this potassium feldspar and olivine here, um, which look more dull uh, and less like metals. So that's luster. Then we have breakage. Breakage is a term I use to refer to how the mineral breaks apart, all right, the way in which the mineral sample will tend to break. And again, we have two main types of breakage. The first is cleavage. Minerals that display cleavage, they will break along smooth planes parallel to where the weakest bonds are. Uh, the way you can identify this is by looking for samples that almost look like they have been cut by human beings. Um, but in fact, that's breakage in the form of cleavage. They're breaking in a predictable, in a predictable way. Um, as opposed to cleavage, we have fracture. Minerals that display fracture, they're going to break along more irregular or curved surfaces without much of a definite shape. Uh, and the best way to visualize this is to see some examples. So here are three minerals. Uh, this is biotite mica on the left, which displays cleavage. It breaks into thin, flexible sheets. 
Um, in the center, we have uh, calcite, and on the right, we have galena. All of them look as if they've been essentially cut with some sort of blade, but that's just how they break apart. The opposite would be fracture. These samples all display fracture, like this olivine on the right here, um, and they look like they're broken kind of randomly. There's no predictable shape. If you were to hit them with a hammer, they would just break into kind of a random shape. So that's breakage. Then we have hardness, and this is exactly what you might think. It's how hard a mineral is, or in other words, how much the mineral will resist being scratched. And to figure out hardness, we have a scale that we use. It's called the Mohs scale of hardness. And it's a scale that goes from 1 to 10, uh, with 1 being soft and 10 being hard. Um, and here you can see different minerals and where they fall on the Mohs scale of hardness. So one of the softest minerals known to man is talc. Uh, that has a 1 on the hardness scale. And you can actually break it apart with your fingernail. It's very soft. Um, going all the way up through gypsum, calcite, fluorite getting harder, apatite, orthoclase, harder still, quartz, topaz, corundum, and then eventually diamond, which has a hardness of 10. It's the hardest mineral that is known to man. Now, the way we test this uh, is by trying to either rub mineral samples against one another to see which is harder and which is softer, or to rub them against some known surface um, or some known substance, something like uh, the copper you find in a penny, which has a hardness of 3, or uh, a piece of glass, which is commonly used, which has a hardness of 5.5. So a typical test would be to take a mineral and try and scratch a piece of glass. And if it does scratch it, you know that mineral has a hardness greater than 5.5. If it does not leave a scratch on the glass, then it would be less than 5.5. So that's hardness. And then finally, we have this other category. And there are a bunch of other characteristics that we can look at. And I'll give you a few examples. Um, certain minerals react when exposed to acid. So like calcite, for example, will fizz up and bubble when you put uh, weak acids on it. Um, dolomite does the same thing, but only when it's powdered. Um, some rocks will glow under ultraviolet light, like fluorite. Uh, it gives a very impressive uh, fluorescent glow when you shine an ultraviolet light on it. Um, the mineral calcite displays double refraction, which means when you look through it, uh, it will reflect, refract the light so that you're seeing double of whatever is on the other side. Um, additionally, we get samples like magnetite, which is magnetic, so it's a good way to test it. And then things like taste and smell. Halite will actually taste salty. It's also known as rock salt. Um, or sulfur, which will actually smell kind of like rotten eggs. Uh, one important thing to keep in mind is that all of a mineral's physical characteristics result from the internal arrangement of atoms. And that means the way in which the atoms are set up inside the mineral is what gives them all of these characteristics from color, luster, streak, hardness, etc. All of those result from the way that those atoms are arranged and ordered and, and bonded together within the mineral. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like on YouTube. Thanks.